help in the, uh, the situation by providing that. That's why it's, uh, that's why it's shown there. Uh, we will be addressing that with Sebago Technics in regards to the stormwater calculations and, and whether they're required at all. One of his uh, comments, actually comments 8, 9, 10, and 11 are all in regards to the rain garden. Those may change. Uh, because of their comments, our design will probably change to reflect those comments or come up with something totally different. Um, so that sort of addresses or tries to address those uh, all the way through number 11. Um, there was a comment, and I think it was probably incorporated into one of those in regards to the, the ditch along there. The existing ditching that comes off of the hammerhead on Astor Lane is poor. Uh, if it's there at all. Um, we're trying to pr promote a good drainage system on that side uh, with a, an adequate ditch that uh, meets the town standards. Uh, so we uh, try to at least uh, grab onto that and provide, uh, provide that uh, design on the plans. The driveway. Um, the driveway is not shown. Uh, this was for a road improvement. I came back as a comment, where is the driveway? Uh, and where is the culvert that goes with it? And if the culvert is there, then make sure that it is designed to uh, drainage standards and also in accordance with the uh, uh, town standards. Uh, the access, I'll show you. Um, what we're looking at is the access would be right about in here. So there would be a driveway entrance in here with a culvert, appropriately sized, uh, graded, uh, and provided with uh, the adequate protection on the inlet and the outlet of the uh, structures um, to protect it. Um, the, the, that sort of addresses the uh, driveway or the entrance. That's number 12 on 13. We were looking at removing this berm. What I see coming down here, and it may be difficult to see, but all the water runs down the side of the curb, all along here, to here, and then is redirected across the street by a paved berm. That's not typical practice. Uh, that's why, because it was not typical practice, I chose to remove what. I would like to do, and I think that in discussions with the town and with Sebago Technics, the water that is following along the curb, right where it hits the, um, the paved berm, is to let it go off into a constructed swale that is riprap protected or jute mesh protected, depending on the slope, typically greater than 5%, it's riprap. And then. Excuse me. Would your children like to sit down, please? Thank you. Continue. Thank you. Okay. So um, I think I'm going to propose back to the town uh, that I would still like that. Um, does it come out? Does it stay in? I think the stormwater is better uh, taken care of by bringing it down and getting into this wheel rather than crossing a public right of way, a public road that um, does not make sense. It does move that way. I saw the videos that were sent to the town. Um, Maggie was out there during that same rainstorm taking pictures. You can see all the sand deposits and which way they, uh, they move. And if you look at that video, if you have seen it, and you look at this ditch right in here in the culverts, it is all murky. It's the water that's taken all the sand and salt off the road and depositing it down there. I'm trying to keep it at least on one side and not bringing it uh, across the road. Um, on 14, question of 14 was the swale on the, uh, the east side of the road. Uh, and I just mentioned uh, that anything over 5% is typically rip-wrapped. This would be rip-wrapped because it is greater than uh, 5%. Anything under 5% uh, can be stabilized with a uh, turf reinforcement mat or jute mesh. Uh, is typically what it might be called. Can I back you up one second? Yes. So you're bringing the water down onto the uh, upper side there and bring it all into the rain garden? 
That, that would be, and that's why uh, uh, Steve Harding had, had a, uh, an issue with a lot of this area over here, not what was coming across here, but this area going into the rain garden, feeling that I was not capturing the uh, inadequate area in there. I was capturing what was gravel and providing the water quality for gravel, not for woods and lawn. Uh, excuse me. I think probably a lot of the water is actually coming right down Astor Lane, not from the from the turnaround that, easement. I mean, that I, is correct. I mean, if you look at the contours here, there is a lot that comes down this way. I'm trying to uh, show it, that it follows the edge of curb along here. Um, the the topo over here does end. It isn't uh, very clear. If the road was built to the standard, it would have a typical crown and the water would run along the edge of the road going in this direction. But right now, it's almost straight across. I'm assuming that it still flows in that direction along what would be the curb line if there was a curb there. But you are correct, there's more that comes down Astor Lane that goes in this direction. And that's why that paved berm was placed there to control it and to get it into a a defined uh, ditch better than on the east side. I appreciate that. Um, I had to say that when you do come back, um, you know, the town engineer had 16 comments, yes. which is a lot. Not all of them were about drainage, but mm -hmm. the majority was about drainage, rain gardens. Uh, there's Correct. quite a bit. So yep. I, I do have concerns about drainage. And um, I know you're asking for a waiver on enclosed uh, drainage system. I see that waiver that you're requesting, um, maybe the waiver on the catch basins. But I, I may, I'm concerned about that. Um, I will be looking, of course, to what our uh, town engineer has yes. to say. And I'm hoping that you will come up to some standards mm -hmm. that um, will. And, and definitely approved. will. I mean, any, any of these comments that. I've received from uh, the town, the water district, uh, the uh, town engineer, uh, even uh, public comments. I address them as a comment and response all the way through there. So you'll understand them fully and the plans will reflect that. So I have no question in my mind that um, whatever he had for comments will be addressed to his satisfaction or I can't submit it again. Okay. Appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Any other? Go ahead, Andrew. Um, how, uh, as, as it stands now, uh, I know this for a fact, because I walk down Astor Lane a lot, obviously, with the gate, the town plows the snow basically right up against the gate. Correct. So the town's in charge of the public way. You're going to now have an extension that's a private way. The town, how is it going to work with the town? Where's the town going to put the snow? And then how is the private maintenance agreement going to handle snow removal for their piece, given that the town basically, I don't know what they're going to do with the snow. That's my question. And, and I have not uh, discussed that with Bob Malley directly, but I know in other communities where we've gone from public on a through, through street, when we've gone to, from public to private, the uh, town plows uh, wing it to the left and to the right as you come down. So there's very little. Um, pile uh, maintained at the end, which would be in here, um, then it's an agreement. It is a, there is a private agreement for the maintenance of uh, South Street. And that would have to do what the town feels acceptable. Because the town has to plow this and they can't just leave a, uh, a banking here they will more than likely wing it off to the sides, which I have seen that done. And so I'll have that discussion with Bob Malley and, and get that answer. Go ahead, Jonathan. Now, you have the approximate location of the gate at, uh, to be installed only upon request of South Street residents and or town of Cape Elizabeth. Can you highlight 